Can we get this in 30 minutes, guys? Mm hmm <laughs> I know, you have a lot of thoughts. I mean, I don't uh, have that Okay, now thoughts. we have to wait till whoever's in the bathroom's out of the bathroom. You hear that sound behind us? Mm-hmm. That's the bathroom. That's the toilet? <laughs> no, it's the fan. Okay, it's not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no one's allowed- Tell them that no one's allowed to <laughs> while we're recording. <laughs> or <laughs> No <laughs> Preferably no <laughs> either. <laughs> I'll probably put that in, but I'm just gonna bleep it all. <laughs> no one's gonna know what you said. Yeah. Um, hello, and welcome to another episode of In the Closet with Grant Smiley. Today I am joined by... Albert Bolter. Maverick. Cole. Oh, we're not using... Oh, man, that's hard. <laughs> that's, that's embarrassing for you. I mean, the episode, the show's called In the Closet with Grant Smiley, so, you know, you'd think... Yeah. I'm probably, you know... It's fine. They can find your last name. You guys are in the video. It's not hard. <laughs> How did y'all like the movie? I didn't. Oh. <laughs> here's here, here's my base opinion on it. Okay. I can't say I hated it. I can't say I liked it. Uh, I just kind of walked away from it feeling nothing. Like I I wasn't changed by the movie in any way, which to I think some people might be the worst way to watch a movie. At least you leave something from a movie you disliked. Here I just I kind of just felt nothing. Yeah. Never. Yeah, honestly, it was... I wouldn't say it was bare bones, because they definitely did explore a lot of things in the sh inside of this movie in terms of the Mushroom Kingdom, and not only that, not only the basic Mushroom Kingdom, but things outside of it, like, you know, the... Was it Kong Country or whatever they yeah. called it? Kong Land? Mm -hmm. But they, explore, they explored a lot of... Uh, the areas that Bowser conquered as well, and having that look a lot of, more like the, uh, the earlier... the later worlds of the Mario games... Like, especially in most games, by the time you get to the Bowser world, it's usually, like, burn, decay, and dying. And they helped th fit that super well with it. But I think that they played it really safe, both character and plot-wise. And that makes a lot of sense when you consider what their previous attempt with this Super Mario movie was. <laughs> I still don't watch that. I definitely should. Oh, that yeah. might be another In the Closet coming up. Yeah, that's, my, that's my next recommendation. Yeah. Considering that <laughs> it was made by Illuminations and Shigeru Miyamoto was absolutely on that project the whole time, to my knowledge. Yeah. Uh, I'm not surprised that it is a very safe movie. It's not saying yeah. it's a bad one, but... A lot of people have been blaming Illumination for the issues, but I think a lot of it might be Nintendo being so, like, you cannot do anything, you, you know, like, we are going to have full control of this, resulting in a very, you know, kind of just basic movie, uh, w w was what I kind of felt, but, you know, it's, it's hard to say it was something like that. So, but let's, yeah, let's get into your thoughts. So, I got exactly what I wanted out of this film. Like, honestly, hearing a Mario movie... Um, is being made by the Minions people, um, who have not a great track record in terms of films generally, at least in my opinion. I know, have I know you seen some, the Sings? Have you seen Sings? I, I have. I've seen both Sing oh, 1 really? and half of Sing 2. Fell asleep okay. during the other oh, half. Oh, well, that's not great. <laughs> um, I, d I like the Sings, and I like the first couple of yeah. movies. I got exactly what I wanted out of this. I, I, I did feel that it wasn't particularly ambitious, but I didn't expect it to be. You know, it hit all the bases that it needed to hit. It was a very fun, very harmless kids film. And I feel like there's a, there's a decent amount there for people who are invested in the Mario-verse and really enjoy those video games and want to see, like, a visual representation of those on the big screen. It's a really fun adventure romp for kids that I think is a massive tier. Maybe not a massive tier, but definitely a solid tier above anything else. It's Illumination, right? Yeah. 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 Like, solid tier above any other of Illumination's work, and right. I think that most of it came together pretty well, you know? There's some flaws, it's not perfect, but it's it's a harmless kids film, and I really enjoyed myself for what that was. For me, it was definitely better than Minions, Despicable Me 3, and The Grinch. And I haven't seen either of the Savory Life of Pets. Mm. For sure. But I would think, I actually think it might be below the first couple of Civil Me's, The Sings. And I actually did like, we both liked Minions Rise of Gru quite a bit. Yeah, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, so, Fun. Uh, for, so it kind of, it's kind of actually in the middle of my elimination ranking. For sure. 
Yeah, what, what, why don't you talk more about why you dislike the Cole? Okay, so first I'm going to talk about the pros. Because it's Illumination, they, they have the budget, and I think the visuals in the movie were really, really awesome. Yeah, they're, the, the they're... Rainbow Road sequence was definitely the standout for me when they're um, the Mario Kart type stuff. They yeah. It really great. All, all the animation was just really, really good. Um, but when it comes to more of the... I feel like Nintendo, again, was on top of it, but... Uh, when they tried squeezing in their like little Easter eggs or whatever you want to call them, references, um, like trying to transform game music into movie music, it did not transfer well for me. Really? You didn't like that? No, I, I just felt like it was very forced and it didn't transition well whatsoever. Um, hmm. A lot of the movie just felt very, very forced, like oh, we have to squeeze in these characters. And they squeezed in a lot of like the random ones. Like Even at one point, they the little red spiky shell guys that no one knows the name of, they even said, whatever those guys are. I thought that was like, yeah, that's funny. But then they missed some of the more standout characters. Like, where was Daisy? Yoshi. <laughs> and whatever. The, uh, Yoshi. The, yeah. the, the, the pink Yoshi. <laughs> oh, well, I did have a question for you, Bert. There is a pink Yoshi at one point. Was that's that? Not, that's it, not it's Birdo. It's not Birdo. Because there was Birdo. no bow, bow this, I assume. This dude doesn't know who Birdo is. <laughs> <laughs> Birdo predates Yoshi, which is. No the way. It does. Yoshi? Yeah, she does. That's She's crazy. in Mario Brothers, too. And that's Yoshi's crazy. in Mario World. Yeah. It's I, funny that you. It, it's funny because, like, a lot of your. What you didn't like about the film, I actually felt worked really well for me i really really enjoyed the composition and the orchestral like cinematic versions of all these various mario tracks i felt that they were actually a bit more restrained on like the amount of references to mario games like it's really easy because there's mario is a series that's so dates so far back and has such a wide and recognizable cast of characters that it's really easy to throw as many of those into there as they can. And they certainly do put a lot, but it's mostly the people that you would expect. You know, like Peach, Toad, Bowser, all those guys. Yoshi gets, like, a scene in the background, but he's not even in the real film, really. But I it, I actually really enjoyed, like, a lot of, the, a lot of that stuff. Um, I do think that the soundtrack um, was a bit... What's the word? Lackluster? No, I... You're talking about the songs that were not I, I get game music? The, I suppose my issue is not the actual songs themselves. I feel like they're very well composed. I just feel yeah. like maybe they're not always in the best spots. And also spots where they chose to use licensed music. Well, or... that, that was my least favorite part of the movie. Oh, yeah. That's no, awful. <laughs> no, licensed music can be a great tool for filmmakers. Guardians of the Galaxy has done a great job using licensed music. But it can also, I, I think, ruin a scene. Uh, Take on Me, I Need a Hero, Mr. Blue Sky, none of that fit in this. No, and I really, really liked all the game composition. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually find the original music they were going to put in those scenes before they got yep. them. And it's just far better. It's just yeah. so much better. It, it just fits the scene. So no, I'm I was I was really disappointed uh, with the music choices yeah. to use popular music. I just didn't think this needed it at all. I don't think it adds anything. I don't think it would have helped more box office. I, I just don't see any reason mm -hmm. for that to be there, and and by far what I hated the most. Uh, I do want to talk about a couple pros as well. Like I said, um, I think the visuals is a good thing to talk about because it does it looks great. Um, and I I actually I wanted to say something about the voice cast because I was very impressed by the voice cast. I thought. Oh, yeah. Really well casted. Uh, Jack Black, obviously a huge standout. I think Seth Rogen is just a fantastic voice actor, even if it's like, oh, you know, maybe that doesn't fit Donkey Kong. He's just a good yeah. voice actor. I think Chris Pratt was actually really great. The only person I didn't really like was Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong. Uh, uh, I've heard that a lot, That too, schnozzy yeah. voice got very annoying. <laughs> and I like Fred Armisen. He just doesn't uh, really work. No, but no. I got really tired of that really quickly. Yeah, I I think the voice cast was, like, pretty hit or miss. Mm -hmm. um, maybe... I think there's more of a problem with me than like Seth Rogen. I just I was very distracted by <laughs> Seth Rogen being Donkey Kong. <laughs> That's fair. I'm just like yeah, totally. I don't know. There's a couple of times he does like the laugh in this film, and you know, like one time it's very prominent, one time it's just kind of like a background joke. But both times, like man, that's really distracting. And even when he's not doing like the Seth Rogen thing, and he's just being Donkey Kong, I don't know. It just didn't quite work for me. I do agree that like Chris Pratt did a lot better of a job than I think most people expected. I, I think he really nails it. He kind of goes back and forth. I feel like he kind of falls back into just, like, generic Chris Pratt 
like voice a couple of times and a couple of times he kind of goes the other way where he's a bit too like Italian. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Like he's like, ah, yippee, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. But I, I agree. I think for the most part, the voice cast did a really good job, which is not what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Oh, I did want to mention Anya Taylor joy. That was peach. Right? Yeah. Yeah. One of my, maybe my favorite actress, honestly. I think she's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I not a fan. I, I like her as an actress, just I didn't feel like she did a great job as Peach. Mm. Um, I, this, I think, might be her first voice acting role. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I think she's in the Playmobil movie. So. Uh. <laughs> um, but she does live For action. Sure. Bits, yeah. I haven't seen that. <laughs> Another film maybe we review at some point. Mm. I, I, I should probably mention a few cons, because I, I don't want to seem like too overly like praising of this film. I, I do think it does a really good job, but uh, one thing I really had an issue with was the film kind of really blitzes by things like it's a really fast-paced film and yeah. i feel like it doesn't really spend a lot of time in the right places and it's not a very long film so they, no. they had more time they could have played with yeah it was like an hour and a half right yeah it's really rather yeah. short for and like now. you know you're going from boom 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 location to location like especially yeah. once they enter the like other mushroom kingdom dimension mm-hmm. like they go they go from world to world to world extremely fast I think the only one that I felt was like appropriately paced was their like the uh, Donkey Kong Country World uh, when they actually spent some time in there. I felt like that was appropriately paced, and everything else I felt like just really blitzed by. I think the biggest example of this is when Mario uh, first encounters Peach, um, and their conversation is like literally like, "Oh, hey, you're a human. Yes, I'm a human. I'm looking for my brother. Okay, I'm looking for Bowser. Let's go together." And then they just leave. <laughs> yeah, after the short training section. But yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it would have been nice to get a little more of Peach's like mm-hmm. uh, excitement that there being another human there. I would yeah, think that would have been a really cool thing, and I would have liked more um, Luigi in it too. Oh yeah, I um, I definitely would have. Uh, I think right amount of Donkey Kong, right amount of Bowser. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. feel I needed any more of either yeah. of them. Um, but yeah, no, I could see that for sure. But yeah, and just like I don't know, it also would have made kind of the characters feel a bit more natural. Uh, because there's like a a scene that feels like it's kind of making up for that lack of like character interaction kind of later in like a big montage where they're traveling through the worlds where like Mario, Peach, and Toad all kind of sit down in this like fire flower uh, meadow. And it's a really beautiful scene. It looks amazing, but like the dialogue in it is like really expedition heavy and really clunky and I just feel like it doesn't really work and it's like really trying to let it's really trying to make up for the lack of character growth and that we had through the rest of the film so I don't know I, I felt that didn't really work very well um, anyways I have two characters I really did not like okay Toad I didn't need Toad in this. Oh, yeah. I, I hated <laughs> Toad. I want less yeah, Toad for this. sure. He, didn't need, he could have, like, introduced the world, but he didn't need to go on the whole yeah. Donkey Kong thing. Yeah. Um, he's yeah, really he, annoying, too. He's a character. It's like, oh, man, he's, like, kind of supposed to be annoying, and but they don't really do it in a way to yeah, where he's charming. Find a way. He's, he's just annoying, and they don't do anything <laughs> with that. <laughs> I think Puss in, Bo- Puss in Boots' Last Wish recently came out. I don't know if any of you guys saw that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw it. Uh, they have Pero, uh, the, the dog in that, who's oh, yeah. kind of played kind of that same way but they do it right where mm-hmm. he's not necessarily annoying to the audience but is annoying to the other character right and it works yeah. so um and who was your other character you wanted to mention i'm glad there wasn't a whole lot of this character but the luma oh <laughs> i hated the luma yeah. that got the biggest laughs in my audience i went to a very big screening and people really love this i think i think I, it's a funny bit yeah like once and it, but, but they but, did it so many yeah, times they, they did it like times. three or four times and also at the end credits as well it was crazy it, oh yeah people it, people love that end credits thing super too. weird yeah. Yeah, I um, uh, I guess we're in spoilers now too. Yeah, I'll, put, I'll put a spoiler warning. My man it's was the fully, Mario movie. Who yeah. cares? My man was fully thrown off the vibes in the court. <laughs> <laughs> it was not enjoyable. To me no, whatsoever. Yeah. I was yeah. actually really yeah. disappointed because I really like Super Mario Galaxy and all the Lumas. You can interact with them, and they seem all, like yeah. really charming. Yeah. But this one was like, oh, I'm really dark, but I have a smile on my face, so it makes it funny. No, no, I don't know. It didn't. It didn't work for me at all. It's a. It's a very cliche shtick, and it just like really doesn't work. I mean, it works. I thought it was like kind of funny. Like, ah, oh, sure, first time. Yeah. And they just kept doing it. Like, yeah, it was a lot. It's also. It's also weird to have 
I guess it's not weird because they're like kind of teasing for like future sequels and merchandise and whatever expanded lore they want to have with this. But I, I did find it a little weird that they have like just a random Luma in the film and like nothing else related to like, I don't know, like yeah. Galaxy or any Rosalina. I know there was one line, but that was during the fire uh, flower field scene. And she's like, there's a lot of galaxies out there. And it's like, Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> lady. Yeah, I know nothing Appreciate about the it. Lumas, so that's my first, yeah. like, my only interpretation of a Luma right now is that star. So yeah, yeah. it's not a, not a good no, and not I a think good I first. I played impression. a little bit of the galaxies, but not not mm. a lot. Um, I think that's really most yeah. of the Mario experience. I played a Donkey Kong game mm-hmm. a long mm-hmm. time ago. What were your guys' thoughts on Mario now having a canon full family? Oh, yeah, yeah, just a full family. That was cool. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I thought it was weird. Like there, there's nothing on it in the games, at least to mm-hmm. my knowledge. And then out of nowhere in the movie, they just introduce these characters. Well, it's they're a, not from New York. I think it was games. some lies. Yeah. That, that correct is, either? Uh, no, they are right. I, I are actually they from New York in the games. I, I don't know. The, the Mario canon is like super loose. Yeah. <laughs> if there is one, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like. So they were in Wrecking Crew, and I think Wrecking Crew was set in New York. Okay. Mm. Um, and I, I, for, I don't remember, honestly. I'm not a Mario expert mm. by any means, but... You're definitely a better, <laughs> you're better educated than I am. But, like, sure. I, I definitely agree. It was really weird to have, like, Mario's whole extended family there. Mm. And also have his, like, main motivation through the film, besides, like, I want to say my brother, to be like... I'm a disappointment to my dad, and I don't want to be a disappointment to my dad. I thought that was really weird for, like, Mario. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> I will say, I really like the family, because I thought it, that, you know, this is definitely its own version of Mario, mm-hmm. and adding things that make it its own version honestly interests me more, I guess. Yeah. I, I guess this was the, I mean, what would you say, I'm curious, the people who are more Mario fans here, this is probably, like, the best version of Peach we got, right? Because she's getting a little more character to play with. Uh, yeah, I maybe think, like the sports games. I think it's a bit different, a different interpretation of Peach. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, yeah, it just feels like a completely different character. Honestly, okay. I feel like the biggest issue I had with Peach in this movie. I mean, it was cool that she was, you know, an absolute badass right. in terms of like combat and defending and her motives. But Robots. it often felt like she was more motive and narrative device than character. Yeah. Like half the time when she was talking, it was. We gotta save the kingdom. Mm. We gotta go here. We have to do X. Yeah, which she is, was. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, which is where I just like we were saying. I'd love to see more of that exploration of her being excited to see another human. Like mm-hmm. that could have given her some more character. Yeah, she, yeah. She was really just, for the most part, an exposition piece, which felt like kind of doing her character dirty, you know, because mm-hmm. she was an interesting character outside of that, and she did have a lot of really. She had a lot of scenes of being competent, you know, mm-hmm. like being kind of a bad. Uh, can I say bad words here? <laughs> Is badass the bad word? Sure, yeah. <laughs> that that one. <laughs> I've already said it. That's probably it's, fine. It's late. I'm sorry, friends. But um <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I I think that Peach was had a lot of good moments, but in terms of execution was a bit um fell a bit short, I suppose. Um but I am glad that she wasn't just like generic damsel in distress because if that's kind of your first thought making a Mario movie, Pe- Peach is like that very traditional like goal at the end. Oh, we got to save the princess, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I know an idea that I liked, that I know a lot of people weren't always on the, on board with is that a lot of people didn't like that Luigi was kind of like the damsel in st- distress in this scenario. I love that. But I, yeah, did, yeah, I was gonna say I did like that when they were separated. It kind of gave Luigi not only time to be on his own, be his own character, but it often felt like the way that they were you put the scenes that they were putting it in were very similar to stuff like Luigi's Mansion. Like mm-hmm. even down to when he was holding down the flashlight and when he was moving around. It looked very similar to like the animations you yeah. would see in Luigi's Mansion, and it gives him an arc in the movie, which is nice to see. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I had no problems with Luigi, other than maybe like I would have liked to seen a little more of him. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. It, but that's like kind of how he was in the Mario games as well. Like mm-hmm. Luigi in Galaxy, for example, he's found in these different worlds, and you have to go save him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's very much what this movie did yeah, with he... him. So I I appreciated it I, as much as you know we want to see more of Luigi. Yeah. Um, 
that's how he was in the game, so I'm totally fine with that. We'll we'll definitely be getting sequels and spin-offs with how well it's doing, and I think <laughs> what I'd be For most sure. interested in would actually be seeing a Luigi based film. Um, yeah. From his perspective, because I think he's a more interesting character, honestly. Uh, walking out of this, he was probably my, you know, the one I wanted to see the most of. So. Oh, something I forgot to mention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> when we were talking about the family with Mario, is that I didn't mind the stuff with his mom and dad, but like. Are there other Mario brothers, or are those like their cousins, or like because there was a because no there was a bunch of <laughs> Mario's, so many of them. yeah, <laughs> or if they're even Mario's, I, yeah. I do we know Mario's last name? Ma- isn't it Mario? Well, Isn't Mario, Mario in, in the Super <laughs> Mario Brothers movie, uh, not not this one, the yeah. old one. It's Mario, Mario, Luigi, Mario. Yeah, but uh, they're the Mario Brothers. They could also just be a really similar looking family as well. Yeah, yeah for that sure. Might have just been the setup. Yeah, I don't know. I it was funny because like I who ended up being dead. I uh, kind of looked like Wario in the first scene. <laughs> You're teasing it, man. I was like, oh man, I'm so ready for Wario to just be like a big old hating. <laughs> and, no, it was just his dad, and he was kind of disappointed. <laughs> I, I would have liked Wario to be like yeah. a cousin. That could have been fun. Totally well, they're they're going to throw Wario in at some oh, point. Yeah. Probably Waluigi, too. I, I'd expect them the next one, honestly. So Just because they yeah. can have fun with the casting. And yeah. get one of these bigger names in it. Yeah. Okay. Well, also in credit scene, just real quick, I was kind of unimpressed with that, too, because it felt kind of like the obvious. Well, story. it's... Okay, so the end credit scene, if you're not familiar, uh, basically... We just zoom in on a pipe that has a uh, that has a Yoshi egg on it, and uh, it like cracks, I think, and yeah. that that's it. Yoshi. It's yeah, really a little noise. But it's in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah, and it's in Brooklyn, and which really I was like, so weird to me to have like your big climactic, well, not climactic, but like teaser and credit scene. Because we already saw Yoshi's in the film. <laughs> they were in the background and we saw them. And they were like, there was a bunch of them too. And they were running well, around. A reference I did get was the baby Mario's. Yeah. yeah I, oh, yeah. I actually recognized that. So that was cool. Yeah. But yeah. that's a very Yoshi. That's all Yoshi based, right? Too. So usually Yoshi's older than Mario. Is that, Am I correct about that? Well, there's a lot or of like, Yoshi's. Uh, I guess, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, Maybe yeah. this is a different Yoshi. So Yoshi is <laughs> also a species. There's yeah. also baby Yoshi's. Uh, okay. Which mm-hmm. you okay. pick up and like basically like a hell item but uh yeah it was it was really weird for that to be like the teaser thing to like get you hyped for the next film because mm-hmm. it's like we are we already saw this you know give us something new yeah you know give us like i don't know a, char- a character we haven't seen literally any of them there's so many like even like i don't know something ca- someone kind of lame like bowser jr i would even be yeah, more excited no about <laughs> yeah which you know i'm excited to see if they do that because we can get some as a Mario lore truther, we can get some confirmation on if the Koopalings are Bowser's, like, um, mm-hmm. children, okay. or if they're just, like, some random bozos he and found options. on the street. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, no, it was a really weird end credit scene. I, I really did not enjoy that. <laughs> are we ready to wrap this up, guys? Sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, anybody want to give any final... Um, I mean, I, feel like I don't know. Are we doing? Are, are we doing ratings? Uh, I think. Oh, I, I mean, I gave I gave it a five out of ten because, like I said, I'm just sure. very in the middle. I usually don't rate, but if you guys want to rate this time, let's do it. Three and a half stars. Three, oh, out of five. Uh, <laughs> yeah, three three and a half out of five. Okay, yeah. So I would give it a two point five out of five. Then. I gave right it a two. Does a fair two. Enough. What do you have, Maverick? I would probably give it three and a half out of five. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Solid piece to start out on, or to restart. I would yeah. say. Yeah. I'm not like you know. I didn't. I certainly wasn't a huge fan here, but I'm excited to see what they do next. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not against. You know, I hope I enjoy the next one more. So. Heck yeah. Okay. Well. All right. Uh, now I have to figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> Take care. Peace.